500 miles due south of Miami are some of the most beautiful islands in the world. They're not very big, don't have too many people, and you can't watch television there. This little fellow's ancestors were the earliest inhabitants. When Christopher Columbus visited the islands, he found so many turtles, he called them Las Tortugas. By the time Mariculture, the world's first turtle farm got started, they called the place the Cayman Islands. Man first settled here about 300 years ago. From pirate ships or passing merchantmen, they came to catch the Atlantic green turtle which kept ships' crews free from scurvy. It was a simple island life. You did everything for yourself. And to this day, it is still a tradition here to build your own home. Good seamen are always in demand. And the sons of those early turtle fishermen made a name for themselves with shipping companies all over the world, becoming captains or chief engineers on some of the biggest ships afloat today. independence in 1967, the Cayman Islands preferred to keep their traditional ties with the British Commonwealth. The governor is appointed by the Queen, but the Caymanians rule themselves through their own legislative assembly. Visitors come from all over America every year, and the sailing's perfect off Grand Cayman's beautiful beaches. And it's not only the beaches that are beautiful. Some of the local scenery would bring a sparkle to the eye of many a tired businessman. And if you want to know why businessmen are coming to the Cayman Islands, I guess I'll have to tell you a bit more about the history of the place. You see that ship down there, wrecked on the reef? The Cayman Islands are protected all round by coral reefs. They keep the sharks away and make the beaches safe for bathing. But many an unlucky sea captain in the past as wish those reefs weren't there. One dark November night in 1788, a British flotilla went on the reef at East End. But thanks to the seamanship of these hardy islanders, all hands were saved, including a royal prince. The king was so grateful he declared that the island should never pay taxes, thus creating the first tax haven in history. 
Over the last few years, there's been a tremendous business boom, and huge office blocks went up in the middle of Georgetown. They were building banks. And you'll find all the famous international banking names have offices here. By the beginning of 1974, there were over 170 banks and trust companies here. And one of their major problems became a shortage of trained staff. What about the Kamanians, the people who were born on the islands? If your ancestors were turtle fishermen and merchant seamen, where are you going to find the training for a job in a big international bank? This is the problem for many developing areas of the world. In 1970, the first American college of higher education was founded in the Cayman Islands to try and bridge the educational gap between the good old days of turtle fishing and the modern world of business and banking. The founder of the college was Dr. Hugh Cummings, an American and he realized that many Kamanians could not afford the cost of overseas travel to provide their children with higher education. Something needed to be done right here on the island. The college started from practically nothing but a good idea. But good ideas have a habit of getting around. And Mr. Jim Bodden, a local businessman in real estate, donated some land. And then things really got going. There were 34 enrollments in the first year. And today, more than 200 students are receiving their higher education. And many other Caribbean islands are sending their scholars here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is educational station ICCI FM Stereo. 101.1 on your dial. Broadcasting from the International College of the Cayman Islands. Each weekday at this time, ICCI-FM presents Great Moments in Music, two hours of the world's finest classical music for your listening entertainment. The college library was built up gradually by gifts from friends all over the world. Passing exams means long hours of study for these young students. Unlike students everywhere, they'll have to work hard if they want to graduate. Several American universities now work in conjunction with the college, checking examination results and laying down a schedule of work which they can oversee, thus enabling the college to maintain American university level standards. The president of Pace University in New York is an advisor to the college. Every year, visiting professors come from Europe and America to lecture in the Cayman Islands. Occasionally, when an overseas visitor arrives to teach, there aren't enough classrooms to go around. But it can be very pleasant learning under a shady tree with a cool nor'wester blowing across the campus.
International banking has been expanding at a phenomenal pace in the Cayman Islands, and these young people are eager for a chance to acquire American business know-how in the School of Secretarial Sciences. The Caribbean is our neighbor, and they need help to train themselves for the job opportunities available now in their own islands. There is a growing demand for every kind of educational training, far beyond the resources of one small island. Every responsible businessman realizes the importance of creating the right job opportunities for the local people. The chairman of the largest private bank is a trustee of the college, and he has offered a site to build a new school of business and banking studies at Governor's Harbor, one of the major new developments in the Cayman Islands. We've been telling you the story of a college in the Caribbean that started from nothing four years ago and has never stopped growing since. It's a tremendous achievement for a small island, and they've every reason to feel confident about the future. These are drawings of the new expansion to the business and banking school at Governor's Harbor. Dr. Hugh Cummings and his dedicated staff are inspired by a missionary zeal and a desire to help others. And maybe that's why miracles sometimes happen. Over 200 donors are helping the American Committee for the College of the Cayman Islands towards the cost of scholarships and student loans. Funds are urgently needed to carry on the good work. Perhaps you'd care to help us. And remember, all gifts are tax deductible in the United States for U.S. residents.